In this video, I will give you a simple formula to make your voice better in Audacity. It does not matter which microphone you are using. The sound will become better as long as you follow the formula. The better your original recording is, the better it will become after applying this formula. There is one interesting thing about this formula. If your sound does not become quite good after applying this formula, you have to think about your recording strategy. In other words, if your recording does not become better after applying this formula, your recording setup is the issue, and you have to solve that before moving forward. From my experience, I have seen people wasting money on expensive software for magic. Or they are wasting energy searching for a formula that would make their recording good. If this formula does not make the sound better, stop what you are doing and think of improving recording quality. So what is the golden formula? Well, it is about applying these four effects in the correct order and correct settings. The correct order will be like this. The normalize effect has to be applied twice, at the beginning and at the end. Other effects will be in between. The noise reduction effect is optional. We will see in detail how to configure these effects. Just applying these effects may not improve the audio quality. Proper configuration is also important, and we will see that in detail. But before that, I want to show you a thing quickly. I will be using the track on the screen to show the demo. It is the raw recording. No audacity effects have been applied to it. I will make a duplicate of this track. I am duplicating this to compare between the original and improved audio. Now I have two identical tracks. I will apply audio improvement on the second track. Select everything inside the second track and go to tools. From apply macro, you can choose the type of improvement you want. For example, to get a clear sounding vocal, I use clear vocal improve macro. For generic sibilance removal, I use ESS reduction. I have in total 11 macros like improve overall experience, interview improvement, podcast improvement, etc. I will show you in a moment where you can get this. I will use clear vocal improve on this audio. The audio will be improved in a moment. All the necessary effects are configured inside the macro. The audio has become improved. You can see the bottom waveform grew in size meaning it has become louder. Let's listen to the original and the improved sound one by one. In this lecture, we'll see how to remove unwanted frequencies. If you have no idea about audio frequencies, it may seem a very technical term. Trust me, it is a very easy to understand concept. Understanding the basics of audio In this lecture, we'll see how to remove unwanted frequencies. If you have no idea about audio frequencies, it may seem a very technical term. Trust me, it is a very easy to understand concept. Understanding the basics of audio frequencies can help to get a clean audio. It is really amazing how easily the sound is improved in a single click. If you want to get these macros, you can get them from this Buy Me A Coffee page. People are already using this, and it is saving lots of time for them. The installation of these macros is very easy. These macros also come with the EQ it is using. If you already have some experience in improving voice quality and want to use the EQ separately, you can also do that. After purchasing this, you will get a zip file to download. Unzip that file, and you will get the macros and EQs folder. If you want to use EQ separately, you can import the EQ only. I am showing the macro installation process. After you unzip the folder, go to Audacity. From Tools, go to the Macro Manager. Macro Manager will show all the installed macros on the left. You have to import the macros. Click on the Import button. Go to the location where you kept the folder and go inside Macros and EQs. After that click on the Macros folder. You will see all the TXT files inside Macros. From the name of the file, you will understand its purpose. Now you have to select a file and click open. You have to do this process one by one per file. Audacity does not support bulk import of macros, so you have to do this one by one. These macros are also great for Audacity learning. After installing a macro, you can see which effects are inside a macro. You can also see how I have configured the effects to achieve a certain goal like clear vocal or ESS reduction etc. If you are looking for an efficient sound better solution, I highly recommend you check these macros. Let's now see in detail how we can configure the audacity effects to get a better sounding voice. It is the raw recording. I will apply all these effects one by one and improve the audio. Like before I will make a duplicate of the track to compare with the improved audio. I will improve the second track. I will solo it, so only the second track will be active. The first step is normalize. Select everything inside the track by double-clicking and go to Normalize Effect. This step is pretty straightforward. Normalize is a kind of volume control. You can set the volume of the loudest part of the audio through Normalize. You can see an input box of Normalize peak amplitude to. 
You set a value here, and the loudest part of the audio will get that volume. While the loudest part gets this volume, the other parts of the audio will be adjusted. If you do not understand these technical details, do not worry. Normalize is a safe effect. It does not alter the audio data, so your audio quality will not degrade with the normalize effect. The standard value for normalize is minus 3 dB. I will set that. I will apply these settings, and you will see the waveform grow vertically. That means the overall volume level increased. If you followed the best practices during recording, the volume level is most likely to increase after the first normalize. If not, do not worry, just use minus 3 dB as the normalize value. If I play the audio, you will see the volume level increased. In this lecture, we will see how to remove unwanted frequencies. If you have no idea about audio frequencies, it may seem a very technical term. The next effect is noise reduction. Noise reduction is an optional effect. If you do not have strong hissing noise, you may not need to use noise reduction. It actually depends on which platform you are going to use the audio. For example, if you are editing audio for YouTube videos, you should focus on whether any obvious hissing noise can be heard after normalize. If not, you can skip the noise reduction process. However, if you are editing for a voiceover demo or audiobook, there will be certain guidelines about the noise floor. In that case, you may need to use noise reduction to achieve a certain noise floor. I will show you how the noise reduction process works. Select a noise only from anywhere in the recording. It can be from the beginning, middle, or from the end. The noise sample you select should be the kind of noise you are trying to remove from the recording. I will select such a part from the beginning and go to the noise reduction effect. Select a noise sample of around half a second or more. The actual required length for the noise sample is much lower than that. If you choose a noise sample or half seconds or one second, that will help Audacity to recognize the noise better. Noise reduction is a two-step process. In step one, you have to give Audacity the noise profile. Click on the Get Noise Profile button. Audacity now has saved the noise profile and will use this to detect noise. We can move to the next step of noise reduction. This time I have to select the audio from where I want to remove noise. I want to remove noise from the whole track, so I will select the entire track. Go to the noise reduction effect again to configure noise reduction settings. You have to configure these three sliders. However, the actual configuration you can put here is quite limited. Because noise reduction has a severe side effect. Too much noise reduction or noise reduction with wrong settings can destroy the audio quality. For voice recording, you have to keep these two sliders at 6. There is no other configuration for these two sliders that works better than 6. Sensitivity sets the noise reduction aggression mode. Setting a more or less aggressive mode in Audacity introduces artifacts. Artifacts are a new kind of noise introduced after noise reduction. To keep things simple, keep sensitivity always to 6. Frequency smoothing bands try to minimize the frequency gap introduced after noise reduction. For voice recording, 6 works the best. A value of 6 on both these sliders is tried and tested. So always use 6 in these two sliders. The noise reduction slider also works best with 6. It is the amount of noise reduced by audacity if noise is found. However, sometimes the hissing noise is too loud. With 6 dB noise reduction, you may not feel that much noise is reduced. In that case, try a higher value like 9 or 12. If you go above 12 in the noise reduction, you will hear quite a bit of harshness in the audio. The sample I am working on has no strong hissing noise. So I will do a 6 dB noise reduction. Click OK to apply this noise reduction setting. The noise reduction is applied, and you should check if the audio sounds OK. In this lecture, we will see how to remove unwanted frequencies. If you have no idea about audio frequencies, it may seem a very the audio sounds okay, and I will move to the next step. I will add an EQ to this recording. Select everything inside the track and go to Filter Curve EQ. Audacity has a couple of effects to manipulate EQ and Filter Curve EQ is the most flexible. EQ or equalization is the process of modifying the volume of audio by frequencies. Equalization is an advanced audio manipulating technique. You will need some experience and understanding to find the best EQ for a voice because different voices and different recordings require a different EQ. We will not get into such complexity in this tutorial. We will use a basic EQ that should be applied to any voice recording. From factory presets, I will go to the low roll-off for speech. Drag the dots to start rolling from 80 Hz or 70 Hz. Human voice generally does not any frequency below 80 Hz. So we can cut off those frequencies and that will make the voice a bit cleaner. Some low-frequency noise can exist below 80 Hz. 
So if we cut off those frequencies, low frequency noise will be removed. This is a very basic EQ and should be applied to any voice recording. In this lecture we'll see how to remove unwanted frequencies. The audio sounds okay, and we will add the compressor effect. The compressor effect is another complex effect to configure. When we record our voice, we may say some words louder and some words softer. This may hamper the listening experience. The loud words may feel too loud, and the quiet words may be difficult to hear. The compressor effect reduces the gap and helps us to listen to both parts comfortably. The audio I am working with does not have that problem, but still we can use the compressor. It will even out the bit louder and quieter parts and improve the listening experience. For professional quality voiceover work, it helps to get the correct RMS level. I am not going into such a deep level like RMS in this video, but let me show how to configure the compressor. If you look into this part of the waveform, the beginning part looks louder. We can confirm these by playing it and checking the meter. If you have no idea about audio, frequencies, it may seem a very technical. You could see the peak reached around minus 6 for the louder part. The peak reached around minus 9 for the relatively quieter part. The meter reading of the quieter part is important for compressor settings. So keep in mind that the meter recording of the relatively quiet part was minus 9 dB or lower. Select everything inside the track and go to the compressor effect. I will get back to the default settings so that you clearly understand which values to change. Setting the threshold value properly is very important. With the default minus 12, a proper amount of compression may not happen. If you remember the meter reading of the relatively quiet part, that was around minus 9 dB. The threshold has to be below minus 9 dB for the compressor to be active. Technically minus 12 dB as the threshold will work for this audio, but practically that may be too little. If I set a lower value in the threshold, more compression will happen. I will set it to minus 15. Also, keep in mind that you should not set too low value for the threshold. Overcompression will make the sound unnatural. So it is about finding the balance. I will keep the noise floor to its default minus 40 dB. Compressors can bring up the noise in the recording. You have to set the noise floor more than what you see in the meter on the silent parts. Ratio is another important setting in the compressor. I will set it to 3 to 1. The more ratio you set, the more compression will happen. I will keep the other values as it is, but you must check compress based on peaks. Audacity has two modes of compression, downward and upward compression. This checkbox activates upward compression. The value we see by default in the meter is the peak value. I configured the compressor based on what I have seen in the meter. That's why it is important to check this box. Otherwise, the configuration will be wrong or not in the way I want. I will apply these compressor settings. The compressor effect is applied. The compressor effect alters the peak amplitude of the recording. It is important to normalize after compression. It would set the peak correctly. I will set the standard minus 3 dB peak. If you notice the relatively quiet part, it has become louder compared to what it was before compression. The audio is now improved. Let's listen to it to check how much improvement we got. In this lecture we'll see how to remove unwanted frequencies. If you have no idea about audio frequencies, it may seem a very technical term. Trust me, it is a very easy to understand concept. Understanding the basics of audio frequencies can help to get a clean audio. I'll first briefly discuss what audio frequency is, then I'll show you how to remove unwanted frequencies. What is sound actually? In simple terms, the sound is a vibration of particles. These vibrations travel through the air and reach our these vibrations travel through the air and reach our eardrum. Our brain assigns a sound based on those vibrations. Audio frequency is the number of vibrations per second. If something vibrates once per second, we say I hope you now understand the detailed process of audio improvement. I have all these steps in this PDF file. If you want to get this PDF file, you will find a link in the description. However, that's not all. If you want to get professional quality audio, you need to take some more steps to clean up and to make it perfect. You can take my Audacity course if you are into it. I will put the link in the description to enroll in the course. I already showed these macros before, and you should download this. You will not only improve your audio quality instantly using this, but you will also learn better audio editing techniques by analyzing a macro. You will get the links in the description and in the pinned comment.